We have with us Subhash Bhupuria sir. He is a partner at the firm Krita Legal Firm which is a leading IPR and sports firm as we all know. So the talk will be divided into two parts. First, the sir will be giving the lecture, then it will be followed by a Q&A session. So first just giving the brief introduction of sir. Sir is IPR and civil litigation practice at the Krita Legal. His practice strongly focused in the field of intellectual property rights technology and media, consumer and personal injury laws, etc. Having represented leading companies in many cases and in various sectors, sir has holistic understanding and in-depth knowledge of the business requirements relating to these practice areas. And is also a seasoned counsel and regularly appears in various high courts, tribunals and even supreme courts. So without wasting much time of yours, I would like to call up the sir to the dais and proceed the lecture. Before that, a uh, round of applause for the sir. The sir is here taking his important time out for us. Thank you so much, sir, for the lovely introduction. And uh, I'm sure you next time people must be aware of Crida Legal, our firm. And we are one of the firms in the sports and gaming laws. And uh, when I take care of the intellectual property side of sports and gaming, so you can also throw some questions if you have regarding the intellectual property right issues. Well, I was told to give a presentation on sports law. I thought it would be a very, very broad topic. So I concise it to a topic called sports betting. Uh, you guys are aware of contracts, huh? you are done with your contract. Huh? And you must be aware of different uh, provisions and the clauses of contract. Huh? Primarily, sports Betting or gambling or lottery is regulated wagering contracts and contingent contracts. So, what do we understand as wagering contracts? Say, have you looked at this plan? Have you looked at this plan? So, I am putting a bet on it, then I will pay 100 rupees if the plan starts now. It doesn't. I lose my There is no contract. What is the basic fundamental of the contract? I make a promise. You accept that promise. There is a consideration. And consideration. What are the basic qualifications of a basic contract? I have paid 100 rupees. You did not make any promise. And it is all dependent whether I will get my 200 rupees depending upon whether the plan will start. So it's not a contract per se by its very nature because how it starts. The inception of the contract is only because I am paying something. But I am not ex expecting something at this moment unless a performance is done. And that is how gambling, lottery or betting happens in India. Across the When we say, okay, I take lottery first. So lottery used to, uh, but in India it is again a, a state subject and regulated through state acts. So if a state allows lottery, it is again it's a game of chance. I don't want me to explain the game of chance and game of skill. So a game which is skill based is allowed in the law. Game which is only predominantly chance based, like fluke, it is not allowed. So if you are playing poker, it is not allowed. But if you are playing dummy, it is allowed. Because the board says that it is game of skill. It is a skill mode. Uh, if you are playing KBC, it is game of skill. But if you are playing Salman Khan, Daskada, maybe it is not game of skill. Maybe it is. But yes, the qualification is you are involving some labor, some intellect, some skill, and hence you are allowed. It is legitimate. It is legal. If it does not involve skill predominantly, that is the case, then it is game of chance and it is invalid under the eyes of law. So, lottery, gambling, betting, they are game of chance, except the fact that horse racing or rummy is considered to be game of skill and hence betting in horse racing is allowed. So, now the question arises and again, uh, which is also being taken 
due care and a lot of consideration by the law commission of court also is whether a skill based game leading to betting can that be allowed or not. So when we say sports betting, the term it is regarding those games which are predominantly skill based. Can you allow a fraction of chance to be part of the tournament? So that is about the law commission. Before we come to it later, we will first of all understand the different aspects of wagering contracts in sports, which is gambling, lottery, and betting. Lottery, as I said, it's a state subject. Few states in India allow, around 13 states in India allow lottery. And it is a paper based lottery or digital lottery that we are talking about. Then, gambling. Uh, Sikkim and Goa allows gambling. And again, gambling is uh, the basic premise, again the same, which is a basic contract. Coming to betting, it is again, uh, it is not allowed anywhere except Sikkim. And so, yeah, it lead leads to a lot of issues arising from jurisdiction to the aspect of whether union will have any say or not and hence when deciding whether betting can be allowed at Indian level at the national level you have to take consensus from each state or can you formulate a model law for each state as a union government which has the prerogative and the power under the constitution to formulate laws which can be modeled <coughs> mutatis mutandis for each state. The law commission while dealing with sports betting, they have identified the issues first. It says that how the issue of morality is involved in the betting uh, segment, why it is, it cannot be allowed even though it is scale based and why it should be allowed. The law commission says that ex-checkers have lost and are keep losing a lot of money because they are not able to regulate betting. The instances where the courts and the earlier legislative uh, persons they have mentioned that in betting, India has lost several lakh crores and recently it is about 3 lakh crores which was a figure which is coming which could have come to the exchequer's pocket and this has not happened because betting is not legalized. So there is, it also leads to money laundering, it also leads to corruption, it also leads to match fixing. So these are the moral issues which have been targeted, which have been presented in the e-organization report. They suggest that betting should be legalized for one of the reasons being that exchequer will get a lot of money out of it. Secondly, that once it is regulated, then you can keep a check and keep a track of people who are bookkeeping, people who are laundering money, people who are violating or not violating FEDA laws, people who are into corruption. So these are the issues which are presently faced because there is a lot of under uh, current and there is a lot of uh, transactions which go without uh, getting any mention anywhere through betting and through money laundering. So this, this process they want to encapsulate. They also mentioned that everything should be done online or the transaction should be online so it can be easily uh, captured. So these are the few uh, proposals that uh, law commission report has made. But there is not much that uh, that has evolved in past, probably since 1998 when the Public Gambling Act came into picture. Nothing much has involved, uh, has evolved in terms of uh, the law. It remains like the Contract Act which is 1872. Uh, so uh, until unless law commission report is being uh, taken into consideration by the parliament and a law has sprayed, uh, we do not see much happening in terms of legal implications of sports betting as well. Gambling, uh, lottery is a big uh, commercial prospect 
and 13 states are running uh, lottery. There are few companies which are it's almost like a cartel which is working and uh, they are uh, also facing issues from the taxation aspect. So uh, GST now. So, there are few issues around uh, gambling and uh, as in lottery as well. But again, it's, it's, as I was talking to uh, Rahul just a while ago, it is all very vague at this moment. So what we have is mostly precedents and law commission proposals, but there are no distinct laws. In fact, betting is also not defined. Okay? So it was Finance Act 1998, which it said something about uh, like what amounts to betting in gambling, which only said that you know, if you are putting money on a wager account, uh, that amounts to betting in so, well, uh, if you want me to cover any other aspect, I would take you to that. I suppose betting is somewhere around that, so I think 40 minutes will be too long. <laughs> Let's take questions and then we'll understand what we As in the law commission's report, the law commission talked about like uh, uh, linking their Aadhaar cards and everything for the people who will be gambler, who will be doing that particular activity. And they talked about imposing the, uh, taking taxes from those particular people through the form of direct and indirect taxes. Okay. But as of now, there is GST. So what are the implications like, what would be the change after the imposition of GST? In so, where GST is happening? an indirect tax. Primarily it is applicable where the service is provided. So who is the service provider? The company who is uh, operating lottery or maybe you know getting they will be the service provider or the company who is organizing the gambling uh, or casino meeting. What is your income will be direct tax. You will have to pay direct tax on your income. So if you are earning something from lottery or gambling or betting that, that will amount to your income. Right? So the tax aspect will be seen as is what it's seen in, you know, in other transactions. First of all, I didn't hear what you said earlier because I came with not much. Sir, do you believe that in countries like UK, Belgium, uh, sorry, UK, Australia, New Zealand, who have legalized betting to a great extent and uh, the which ha and it has helped the state uh, in terms of revenue. So, do you believe India should do the same or, or should go ahead on the same? Precisely is the idea. But that precisely is the idea of law commission. When they propose that uh, it, it has vast implication in terms of uh, revenue which can be generated because whether you agree or not, betting and gambling is happening and it is not happening legitimately. But a lot of money, a lot of black money is involved here. And hence, the proposals are to curb that black money transaction through betting and gambling. If you look at law commission uh, proposals in the report, it is primarily to identify the, uh, the source, identify the agencies, identify the bookers, identify the players. And when all these things, as Steve mentioned about the KYC and uh, taxation tax liabilities, when everything is brought together, then the revenue will be generated. But how do you balance capitalism with morality? That is important. Like when you talk about uh, money, okay, fine, I'm getting revenue out of it. But then you are letting everyone just uh, you know, sit back and realize that way. That would want to have my follow up question on that. That what about the modern act? Exactly. So moral, moral aspect, because we are a welfare state, you need to consider when uh, tobacco and liquor are the sex commercial, they are not considered to be commercial activities. How can they think be considered to be a commercial activity? That is also morality. Morality is a major, major issue because once you allow people to even legitimately keep, you know, playing and place the bets and uh, do gamble or buy lot and you are letting them become addicted to something which can have a moral degradation. And the presidents will say that it is violative of party. But you so there is where a balance has to be struck. And it is also proposed that you should have two tiers of 
for the, uh, the higher standards and when you take the KYCs and you know through the PAN number you know that how much a person earns, what is his annual income, what are his expenses and you get to know that this is this is the amount that he can spend on betting or gambling then you can place him under that straight up and say that you can bet, bet around this only you can bet around the market so that is where the legislature has to step in and find a way out but it is always conducive to in a way to legitimize betting now what is happening is it's very funny so maybe not in India but there are companies which are based out of Malta or maybe Isle of Man and all these places where Indian was on the flag. These companies have their servers placed there. All the jurisdiction issues and liabilities arise in that jurisdiction. These countries allow betting legally. So if you're placing bet through your internet or web browser, you're only using your server. And you're placing the bet in their jurisdiction. So still amounts to it still is getting and uh, are able to do so even when you are sitting at, in Delhi and that is also not regulated. So those are also issues which need to be covered. Primarily yes, with now online games, fantasy games have come into play. And these fantasy games allow, you know, betting so if Ronaldo or whosoever uh, is playing and you know what are their statistics and analysis based on which you are placing back on the fantasy game. So that has, that has to be related to it. So the laws, we have archaic laws, they have not changed in my hundred years or so. And now we are looking at a completely different picture. So India is a major, major population which can, uh, which can uh, really bring a lot of revenue in terms of gaming, gambling, lottery, and betting on this property. Now, was morality only the reason behind like this gambling being banned in India? <coughs> well, predominantly, I would say yes, because <coughs> we follow other countries. And yeah, unless is. we have a fair idea of what is going to be having implication in India, uh, we do not come out with a very strict. I have not seen any other justification to not allowing sports betting other than or gambling or lottery other than morality being the There are states like 13 states out of 29 allows lottery, but that again is very, very regulated. The state of these acts they allow them to have only number of draws in a game so that people don't sit and you know just keep playing. So morality plays a major role in this because again we are talking about something which is not a commercial activity per se. We are talking about things that you know which are usually which are given a chance. The law commission has prepared the report after a consideration uh, in the judgment given by the Supreme Court and that case was related to the bet, betting, prominent betting in the cricket. So do you think the legalization of betting should be in a phased manner like first in, a, in different sports we will try whether it is working out or not or we should detainly just regularize it, legalize in every aspect of the game and we will see the consequences. What do you think? As a part of definition, you always use in, including inter alia, <laughs> right? So, well, it would definitely include and it will have your interpretation which will apply to that very scope. Now, betting may not be illegal, but match fixing is. So, you need to identify and differentiate between what is illegal, what is legal. Maybe the stakeholder in football or maybe volleyball or basketball, they would come forward and say that how this is match fixing happens. So I identify these are the loopholes. And I all I you know in my provision, in my sections I mention that any unlawful act which is by schedule so and so would amount to fixing. And 
and if something is found like that, then that person's betting license will be cancelled. Things like that. So, well, you cannot have a hidden trial and you cannot have a lottery to start with. If you have a law, it will universally apply to the sports. Well, there are state laws which have identified for the purpose of uh, betting and gambling. They have identified certain sports or games. Right. You can definitely have that list and you can extend that list whenever the sport comes out. But predominantly it will happen in what? Cricket and football? What else? Kabaddi nowadays. <laughs> See, it is, it generally happens through interpretation. Most of the provisions are crafted in a manner which has broader connotation. Like, Contract Act is a classic example. Since 1872, we have been reading. We are in 2018. It hasn't changed. So is the IPC. Hardly any amendments. So it is subject to a lot of interpretation, but yes, it will be a universal law application. Is Indian society ready considering our socio-economic conditions? We have seen even recent blue whale game where the children are committing suicide. Yes. So considering this circumstance, is our society ready for such a society situation? Playing Mahabharat happened to be. <laughs> society has always been ready. It's just that they, they were always aware of these things, and we are very. Uh, you are promoting it. Hmm. These are young children which think that this field so is coming. I, I tell you not to smoke because you are not 18. Yeah, it, I tell you not to, uh, you know, uh, not to have liquor because you are not 25. You do it. The ignorance of law is not an excuse, right? Yeah. If you have a law which says that if you are below 18, you cannot place a bed. I have placed a law. Now it is up to you whether you enforce it through self uh, you know, awareness or through policing, how do you do it? That is a question. And enforcement is always a question. But that is not the lawyer, the lawmakers have to see. Lawmakers have to see what is the population, whether the population is well educated population who understand the difference between who is wise enough to understand when to place a bet, when not to place a bet, what is my economic condition, all those things. So I think to, sorry to interrupt, but I think to tackle that particular aspect of this gambling, the Aadhaar card was like, the KYC thing was that, KYC as in 18 above and then the income was in that particular thing. Yes. To tackle that particular aspect. Yes. So that is the whole idea, that you don't want the whole nation to be sitting and just, you know, placing bet and doing nothing. Right. So we will definitely have these kind of things and, uh, but yes, the enforcement is up to executives. It could only lead to, maybe it can lead to more corruption. You know, if you are placing bed at, uh, not in a public place, but at your home or doing something like that, maybe that could amount to some illicit activity. You might just come and start asking for bribe, but you should know the law. <laughs> My question was more in the respect that we have seen 10 years ago the, the Bombay High Court legalizing begging. So what we have seen the, the poor children find an alternative empl employment that we will beg if nothing happens. Then the same will also see here is, if nothing happens we will beg. That's exactly. 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 I think I'm sure it is uh, it's they was, but it has been struck down recently over. Sure, because obviously it leads to a lot of uh, mafia and uh, child trafficking and all those things. So sure, it is not the not the case. In Begging is more sort of an organized crime. Yes, it is. It is, it is an organized it is crime. An organized crime. But 
actually there is no blanket ban on any kind of employment under 14. So that is the reason so, it is still. That is what they do. So when uh, you look at uh, on, uh, the traffic signal, these people are doing some summer sorts or they are selling balloons. That's how they they come to you. They say, "Yeah, paise de do, mujhe mujhe khana khana hai." The purpose is not to sell you the balloon. The purpose is to beg, but they cannot because if they only beg and not sell balloon <coughs> or a pen of one rupee at ten rupees, the cops will come to them and they'll say, "Ki nahi hai, tu beg nahi." So that is where the loophole is. If it's legalized, it will be a great source of revenue if it's traced. Begging? No, no, not begging. It is betting. Fanatic is a play. If the tournaments like IPL goes up every year. It's IPL. It's betting. It can happen in local tournaments. Smaller and smaller. So it can happen at any level. I feel it's again a very very big uh, game that we're looking at. You know, if you are playing a Delhi cricket, also you do better. You know, it's it's very simple. But yeah, it happens in Ranji matches also. Always happens. Because the law, as of now, it is all vague. It is only and only contractual terms and obligations which. Fine, whether it's a basic contract, whether it's a game of skill, whether it's a game of chance. These are the only qualifications which have to be sure. Whose prerogative is it to make law? It's the union or the state? Because it's like, who's the prerogative to make a law? It's in state business. In state business. Yeah. And that's why the law commission report says that you can prepare a model law hmm. which all the states can follow. So, how do you see the effects? Like, not everybody is into this betting. It may be some people from my circle of our age or it's not like a regular affair in our community. So, and they are only particular people who are running it through illegal ways or whatever means they are doing it. So, don't you see like whether what like we see from economic concentration within hands of pretty few people? Like we are not looking at a social order when we are talking about betting. We are looking at an activity which is and is a regulated, it's a prohibited activity. But we are allowing it because it is anyways happening. We are regulating it for the people who are doing it. If you want to enter into that domain, it will also be regulated. But since you are out of it, you will not be. So my point, my only concern was this, this monopolizing in few hands. So you are saying that whether it is a cartel activity yeah, I but when do you question that? When you get into competition, I mean, you ask whether it's a user dominant position. Are those cartels in a position where they are dominating the game per se? If they are doing it with through some illegal means, then it's match fixing. Then it is no more betting. Then it becomes a crime. It can be cheating, it can be doping, it can be anything. So, see, it also depends on the cause of action. Like, you definitely can say that it's, it's monopolistic activity. People who have high handedness who are corporate mobiles or counter they are running this whole cartel. But the law says, if law ever comes up, it will say that they will have their own tier of betting, you will have your own tier of betting. If you are finding your place in there, you place. Because law has to strike a balance between the social order, the morality, and the religion. So it is discussing. Sir, but don't you think that it will create like a far-fetched idea? But don't you think it will create a social chaos? Like people would 